I'm playing a six string guitar bass with a tremolo, my life is complete. It is quite possibly the trippiest kind of experience as a guitar Wait, player. For the first time in our history, what you're probing me with your member. I do apologise about that. <laughs> so, uh, my thank you to uh, Wikipedia for providing me with such information about mm. the orig origins of this amazing, weird concoction of what is it? Guitar, bass. It doesn't matter what it something is. Something jaguar, we both jazz master, bass, guitar, weird thing going on. So, um, back in the early 60s, 1961, according to Wikipedia, uh, Fender released um, a product called the Bass 6, uh, which is, in a nutshell, a, an E to E tuned six string guitar that is exactly an octave lower than a regular guitar would mm. be. It's kind of shorter scale length than a normal bass, very much the kind of neck that a guitar player is going to feel comfortable with, inspired by sort of, you know, Jaguar type shape, I suppose. Mm. Uh, tremolo system on a bass guitar, strung with bass guitar strings. Essentially, my bottom string here is about uh, a 100 gauge, a 100 gauge string. 100 gauge. Um, uh. Weird though, you know, normal guitar tuners, um, normal guitar pickups. <coughs> so, what we've got here is essentially, I've got the Fender Pawn Shop version, and as you know, uh, what Fender likes to do with Pawn Shop, sorry, Rob, I keep bashing it. That's fine. What they like to do with Pawn Shop is kind of just mod up kind of old designs. Uh, Rob has got the Squire uh, version of this, which I think comes out of the Vintage Modern uh, or Classic Vibe series. Um, and actually, Rob's is more authentic to the original, what Fender did actually originally do back in 61, so that... I can't stop playing it, Lee. I know, it's I, mad, I, isn't it's, it? It's such a nice, playable instrument, I can't stop wanting to just play on this guitar. So look, you take us through, Rob's using a Marshall, which in fairness hasn't quite got the bass end that the Fender's got, but I hope you get the kind of idea. It's got some, yeah, it's yeah. Got some wicked kind of stupid me, distortion sounds. Let me just give you a smorgasbord of... What? Tonage. Uh, you you take them through this, but essentially the first three are just on and off pickups. Yeah, well, well I do switches. some noodling and you, and you do some switching. Well, it, so here's it, all the switches off, nothing happens. So essentially, as I switch them in, you can essentially you can see you can have any combination of these. The the last one is a bit of a weird one. I, I don't know if you'll pick much of this up on on YouTube, but again, it's an authentic from the '60s switch called the bass strangle switch. It does take the very low bass end out of it, so probably makes it a little easier for the guitar amp to handle. Might work good with a distortion sound, I'm mm. not sure. But anyway, well you, you flip your switches in and you see what you... Pick up. Uh, you, uh, I want to hear that with gain. Okay. Do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you, you have no idea how brutal this becomes when we start cranking the gate and playing some <laughs> dirty, dirty tones. This is why we all want one. Uh, this is crazy, isn't it? And the, I mean, again, you got to appreciate, we'll, we'll hear some more of the switching in a second, I want to hear that bass strangle thing does, but you got to remember as a guitar player, you don't have to relearn, you know, everything's the same, just the strings are massively thicker. Yes. Um, and I think, again, I'm, I'm not sure actually looking at the, the, the Pawn Shop one, but I know the Squire one is, again, because of it based on the original one, it's got quite a heavy radius on it. Certainly the early ones of these would have had like a seven and a half inch radius. So by the time you get up to the, the dusty end, I suspect bending and stuff like that is just going to be a non-starter because it's just going to uh, choke out. Down here? No, this end. This end? This is... It is a challenge. I wonder if they've made that with a slightly flatter... No, it's, it's just a challenge. One. It's a challenge. But, but... Uh, so, let's just see if we can demonstrate what the bass strangulation switch does. So get okay. a nice heavy bass tone and just... Well, I got all, I got all the... Um... I've got all the pickups in now. Yeah. So. Yeah, it takes the bass out. I don't, I don't know how much YouTube. You'll, you'll probably need to listen through, listen to this through some speakers with a decent bass end on it to hear that but it just takes as Rob said it takes that kind of it takes the bass end out that makes it wrong as a bass guitar but right as an electric guitar yeah if that, if that kind of terminology what I'm makes enjoying sense. about this is that it is a bass guitar and yeah. that it makes you think in more of a musical musician way than a guitar way so you got a trem system on there as well now that the, the trem system on the Squire doesn't have the locking mechanism that I've got on the pawn shop so I'm guessing you know probably going to throw up a few more tuning issues than the than the lockable one yes um but i want to hear a big bass chord with tremolo which you never ever hear okay. <laughs> this has just become must have guitar for every guitar player that there is. It has when you do this. <laughs> You have to play it in a completely different way, but it's it's lots and lots of fun. So, um, I'm sure whilst we're wiff, wiff, whiffling, waffling on here, um, Dan, our wonderful editor, can put some uh, screenshots of what the different coloured versions of this look like. So if you go to the Anderton's website, have a look in the content section below, you'll be able to see all these different colours that are very cool. Um, 
Now, obviously I've got the, the pawn shop version, which is the sort of the Mexican made Fender rather than, where's that one made? Is it Indonesia or? This one is say? made in sunny Indonesia. Indonesia. So, you know, just looking at it, you can kind of see, uh, I think mine is made of sort of a two or three pieces of wood, whereas Rob's by the looks of things has more pieces of wood on the body. And oh, certainly the, the matching of the timber on, on, the, on the Fender is better than it is on the Squire. So, so the pawn shop, a little bit of license to sort of, you know, play with the original design here. So we've got a uh, five-way blade switch rather than the, the, the sort of on-off switches. I'm kind of glad Fender moved away from those on-off switches. I prefer the, the blade. Yeah, the blade's so much easier to dial in, although you don't quite get the, the combinations you can get with the switches. And as you can see, I've got two single coils and then by the looks of things, this big sort of Jazzmaster type um, pickup in the back here. Um, it, if you look at the sort of, you know, the way the nuts cut and everything, it's a bit tidier on the Fender than it is on the Squire. That's no disrespect to the Squire though, because it's killer, oh, yeah. killer value to mount for money. So, and I'm playing through a Fender, so I've got heaps more sort of bass end on my tone than Rob had on his. But Try playing your Captain Blues on it. I was, see if I'm surprised it. about, I mean, I was kind of wondering, I wonder if you've got to be a bit careful with how much volume and bass end you get on a conventional guitar amplifier, but we don't seem to be getting any kind of flappage or indication that there's going to be a problem with this. But, Not yet, no, but um, I, I would want to be careful the amp I put it through. Yeah. Play, play some blues, see, well, see what you I'll can do. Well, I'll run through the, the, the sort of switch settings and play at the same time. So we start on the neck one. So, got tone and volume. Actually, Chappers had tone and volume. We didn't really show you that, but you know. Lee's can... tremolo locks down. Yes, so. That's with the tone kind of rolled off, so you can get that real kind of jazzy. <laughs> Look out, bass players. You're all going to be out of a job soon because we're going to buy these and do all the bass lines ourselves. <laughs> Um, so let me turn the trem system on, sorry, let me just... Uh... It's just wicked. This is probably like the stupidest but craziest, coolest guitar that we've played in ages, isn't I, it? I think people will be taking these, taking the pickups out, putting active pickups in them and playing metal on them. Well, I, again, because I suppose it's the next obvious step from a baritone where you might... What's yeah. the lowest anybody's ever tuned down on a baritone? What, e. C? What, people go drop E? Yeah. An octave below? Well, so, I, know, I know bands that play. So, so essentially that's what this is. I had dinner with Dimmu Borgir. And I said to them, what do you tune to? And they went, oh, E. And I went, oh, E. And I went, no, no, E. <laughs> I think I'm going to come up with a funky riff and you're going to play over the top of it. Thank you. 
So we swap guitars. And yes. We're gonna jam. A we little are. bit more. We are gonna In jam a. a little bit more. In A, what shall I play? I think you should play. Half of the YouTube population and myself would like to know how much these bass guitars what, cost. What do the other half want to know? They want to know how much they cost as well. Wow. So everybody wants to know. Well, look, the, the pawn shop one, so the Fender one, uh, is a rather sort of um, unsurprisingly mid-priced guitar. So if you want something like this, you're going to have to part with about £600. Uh, you can go to the Anderson's website and get that for definite. As I said before, you've got different colours in this model. They're all the same price. This one, on the other hand, though, with its bound neck and block inlay and you know original switching and just stupidly crazy good looks is 270 pounds i mean literally this chord alone is worth about half the 273 pounds what about the this chord that that's worth the other half that's the, uh, the other half that one so was just, worth it. just literally those two chords alone are worth about 150 yeah. pounds each you know what happens if you play Brian Adams and Tina Turner on it? I don't know, you get about 800 pounds with the chords, I think. <laughs> you get some sort of like, almost like, male version of Tina Turner. You know what it would be? That would be the Brian Adams and Barry White yes, version. Yes, it would. <laughs> Lee, do you think you could sing that like Barry White? I'll give it a try. It's all in love, and that's all. <laughs> that was remarkably low. <laughs> well, so that one costs two hundred and seventy pounds. I mean, come on, there's come on. some crazy bargains. There's at a lot the of moment. fun to be had in that some guitar. Some silly guitars around. Spitted with some Seymour Duncan hot rails, maybe. Uh, or you mean you could? Yeah, because yeah, it's not a standard. You could do all sorts of this. Yeah. You? I want to see, I'm most interested of probably all the videos we've shot recently in seeing people who've bought one of these or one of those posting uh, video comments to this with this insanest, insanest style of guitar that you can possibly insane. play. It's <laughs> insane. They're fun. And we've really enjoyed shooting this video. We have. Which leaves me to say, I've been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. Greetings.